I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has just granted the Department of Justice's request for a stay of a Trump appointee federal judge's injunction blocking the Biden administration from having communications with social media platforms to urge or encourage or persuade them to remove information that would spread COVID disinformation, vaccine disinformation, disinformation about elections and other just dangerous information that could cause harm to the American people. We'll give you some more information about Judge Terry Dowdy's order in a little bit. But for the time being, that order by Judge Terry Dowdy is now blocked because of the granting of this stay by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. It was a per curiam decision, meaning it was a unanimous decision that is unsigned, but all three of the judges uh, ultimately agreed um, to grant this stay. Here's the order right here. United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit before Judge Stewart, Judge Graves, and Judge Oldham. Judge Stewart was a Clinton appointee. Judge Graves is an Obama appointee. And Judge Oldham, notably, is a Trump appointee. Per curiam, meaning all three agreed and it's unsigned. It is ordered that this appeal, filed by the Department of Justice, challenging the order by Judge Terry Dowdy. So it is ordered that this appeal is expedited to the next available oral argument calendar. It is further ordered that a temporary administrative stay is granted until further orders of the court. There's the stay right there for the time being blocking uh, the order, the injunction by Judge Terry Dowdy to take effect. And then finally, it is further ordered that appellant's opposed motion for any pending appeal is deferred to the oral argument merits panel, which receives this case. And so what that indicates is that this three judge panel uh, may not ultimately be the panel that hears the full appeal of Judge Terry Dowdy's order, which I believe and the Department of Justice believes to be, to be completely unconstitutional, um, that will go before this merits panel on an expedited basis during the oral argument calendar that's uh, set to take place. But for the time being, the injunction does not apply to the uh, Biden administration and its agency and departmental and officials. So Judge Dowdy's order is stayed in the meantime. You'll recall this order by Judge Terry Dowdy. It's a 155-page order. It was issued on July 4th. Here are the facts that led to the order. You had a number of Republican attorney generals joined by a number of far-right MAGA Republican groups that wanted to spread COVID disinformation and vaccine lies and lies about the election. And they said the Biden administration and its officials are targeting conservative speech by providing data to social media platforms that rebut the lies and social media platforms are then removing the lies from the platforms to enforce their terms of service. And these MAGA Republican groups and MAGA Republican AGs said that is a form of viewpoint discrimination against conservative speech. And these threats and coercion is what they called providing data and persuading and urging social media companies not to spread lies, they said is a violation of the First Amendment and that these threats constitute undue government coercion. Sounds like a pretty crazy theory, but they purposefully filed this case in the United States District Court, Western District of Louisiana, Monroe Division, where the Trump appointee Judge uh, Dowdy sits. Judge Dowdy has previously made some other horrific rulings blocking uh, policies and programs by the Biden administration, including policies relating to vaccines. And so the MAGA Republicans specifically judge shop to get Judge Dowdy. Uh, initially, Judge Dowdy granted expedited discovery of apex officials in the Biden administration, top 
Biden administration officials, which is unheard of. You don't get discovery of what's called apex or top officials from the outset. You have to kind of climb the ladder and make a showing. Uh, Ultimately, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals stepped in after a motion by the Department of Justice and uh, stopped that order from Judge Terry Dowdy from taking to effect. But it was clear the writing was on the walls where Dowdy was going to rule on this. And the Fifth Circuit there said to Dowdy, you got to make a decision first on the injunction before ordering this type of discovery. Um, But it was pretty much a foregone conclusion where Dowdy was going to rule. And the Fifth Circuit, though, was actually very scathing in that order as well, um, stopping that discovery of the apex officials from taking place. So some time passed. And then on July 4th, after briefing an oral argument, Judge Terry Dowdy made this 155-page ruling and essentially compared the Biden administration, not essentially, did compare the Biden administration to the Ministry of Truth attacking conservative speech um, by having these communications with social media platforms. Judge Terry Dowdy stated that this constituted coercion and pressure and was unlawful and granted this injunction preventing these types of communications between Biden administration officials and social media companies. Here's what was stated in the order by Judge Terry Dowdy. He said the plaintiffs, these MAGA Republican AGs, are likely to succeed on the merits in establishing that the government has used its power to silence the opposition. Opposition to COVID-19 vaccines, opposition to COVID-19 masking and lockdowns, opposition to the lab leak theory of COVID-19, opposition to the validity of the 2020 election, opposition to President Biden's policies, statements that the Hunter Biden laptop story was true, and opposition to policies the government officials in power all were suppressed. It was. It is quite telling that each example of category of of suppressed speech was conservative in nature. The targeted suppression of conservative ideas is a perfect example of viewpoint discrimination of political speech. American citizens have the right to engage in free debate about these significant issues affecting the country. So. Um, What Judge Terry Dowdy, this Trump appointed judge, is saying here is that spreading lies about COVID and lies about vaccines and lies about the election, that constitutes conservative speech and that the administration in power cannot provide information to social media companies like from the CDC that shows actual data to enable the social media platforms to better enforce its terms of service so that Americans will not be killed. What a dangerous thing this judge is saying. The judge goes on to say, although this case is relatively young, and at this stage the court is only examining it in terms of plaintiff's likelihood of success on the merits, the evidence produced thus far depicts an almost dystopian scenario. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a period perhaps best characterized by widespread doubt and uncertainty, the United States government seems to have assumed the role similar to an Orwellian ministry of truth. Pause there for one moment. I would not say that the COVID-19 pandemic was best characterized by widespread doubt and uncertainty. I would say it would be characterized by the death of millions and millions of people across the world and over a million people in the United States where uh, accurate medical information is so critical. So you see the judge's prism right here spreading just these dangerous, dangerous, like right-wing conspiracies that belong on, they don't belong anywhere, but you would see on 4chan and not in a federal court. So the types of judges Trump appointed. Finally, the opinion by Judge Dowdy says, The plaintiffs have presented substantial evidence in support of their claims that they were the victims of a far-reaching and widespread censorship campaign. This court finds that they are likely to succeed on the merits of their First Amendment free speech claim against the defendants. Therefore, a preliminary injunction should issue immediately against the defendants as set out herein. And then if you look at the preliminary injunction, 
These, this is what is prohibited. Meeting with social media companies for the purpose of urging, encouraging, or pressuring or inducing in any matter the removal, deletion, suppression, or reduction of content containing protected free speech posted on social media platforms too, specifically flagging content or posts on social media platforms and or forwarding such to social media companies, urging, encouraging, pressuring, or inducing in any matter for removal, deletion, suppression, or reduction of content containing protected free speech. So you get the point. It's rephrased in a number of other ways. And the Biden administration was like, look, the same way we have a communications department reach out to the press to encourage them to tell the truth or to spread facts or to fact check them, um, we're reaching out to social media companies. We have regular meetings with them that take place to provide them with accurate information so that Americans aren't harmed. You know, social media platforms do play a big role um, in our society today. So empowering them with the right information, we're not coercing them. We're not threatening them. They can take our advice or not take our advice, but we're not actually coercing them in any in any way of like actual threats but that order that i just read by judge dowdy that's what stayed now that was in effect that is now blocked right based on the fifth circuit court of appeal ruling um, that i uh, read for you um, so just so you know what the examples are that the judge cites of these threats and coercion. Um, here are examples that uh, the court lists. Illustrative specific actions by defendants are examples of coercion exercised by the White House defendants. Someone saying, cannot stress the degree to which this needs to be resolved immediately. Please re remove this account immediately. Someone who was spreading lies. Now, Facebook didn't have to do it or Twitter didn't have to remove it. It was up to them, but they were being asked. B, accusing Facebook of causing political violence by failing to censor false COVID-19 claims, saying you are hiding the ball, saying internally we have been considering our options, what to do about this, saying to a social media platform, I care mostly about what action and changes you are making to ensure you're not making our country's vaccine hesitancy problem worse, saying to a social media platform, this is exactly why I want to know what reduction actually looks like. If reduction means pumping our most vaccine hesitance audience with Tucker Carlson saying it does not work, then I'm not sure it's a reduction. Questioning how the Tucker Carlson video had been demoted since there were 40,000 shares. Wanting to know why Alex Bernson had not been kicked off Twitter because Bernson was the epicenter of disinformation that radiated outward toward the persuadable public. We want to make sure YouTube has a handle on vaccine hesitancy and is working toward making the problem better. Noted the vaccine hesitancy was a concern that is shared at the highest and I mean the highest levels at the White House. Yeah, the White House was concerned about vaccine hesitancy because they were trying to roll out a program to save Americans' lives. I can I can go on, but you get the point. That's what the judge says are threats and coercion. Oh, here's another one. Um, one of the top White House communication officers, Flaherty, said, not to sound like a broken record, but how much content is being demoted and how effective are you at mitigating the reach and how quickly that's the orwellian ministry of the truth no the orwellian ministry of truth is an order like this and by the way the order issued um, by judge dowdy is also incomprehensible like what is judge dowdy even saying is blocked here like he's defining conservative speech as kind of dangerous lies that can kill Americans? And where's the line of what the Biden administration could or couldn't talk to without them being held in violation of this injunctive order? So there's so many reasons why this order is unlawful and unconstitutional. And just at a practical level, it makes no sense at all. But um, there you have it, though. Big ruling by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals here, staying and temporarily blocking it. This will go before an expedited uh, uh, panel uh, in the next oral argument uh, uh, grouping 
before the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. We will keep you posted on what happens next. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1.5 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Wherever you get audio podcasts, subscribe to the Midas Touch podcast and hit subscribe right now on our YouTube channel and have a great day. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.